BMW tells us this is a sports coupe. Whatever your take on that, their X4 is certainly an interesting take on fashionable family motoring, an avant-garde compact SUV you'd want to be seen in. If you can afford the fee, it's a tempting take on the compact 4x4 genre, and if you like the looks, then you'll probably like everything else because it's pure BMW. It's even a little more practical than you might expect. True, the world may not need another car like this, but you certainly might. BMW is leaving no stone unturned in its efforts to fill every possible premium market automotive niche with desirable products. Here's another one, the fashionable X4. If you're at all familiar with the Munich Makers model lineup, then you'll get the idea behind this car immediately. In 2008, the company brought us a design they badged as the X6, a kind of sportier coupe-like version of their already established X5 luxury SUV. Against the odds, the X6 has since been a profitable car for the brand. So the same concept has been downsized with this X4, a sportier coupe-like version of the squarer, more practical X3 compact SUV. By the time this car arrived in the autumn of 2014, other brands had already been showing BMW that there was a small, significant group of affluent buyers looking for a sportier, trendier take on the whole compact SUV concept. Some of those people had been satisfied with cars like the Range Rover Evoque, while others with deeper pockets had turned to the even more dynamic Porsche Macan. With the X4, BMW has a product that'll appeal in either case. In theory, it's as controversial as the X6 was when we first saw it. In practice, though, we're all now familiar with BMW pushing the boundaries with its new products. This one, though, should still have the capacity to surprise. Let's put it to the test. Given that BMW's X3, the car this X4 is based upon, is arguably the sportiest offering in the premium badge compact SUV segment, you might approach a drive in this model with quite high hopes. Armed with the knowledge that it has a lower centre of gravity and springs that are about 15% stiffer. It'd be hard, you'd think, for the Munich men to mess this one up. Nor have they. If it wasn't for the exceptional Porsche Macan, we'd be calling this the finest compact SUV-style car we've ever driven. The fact that dynamically this car gets within striking distance of Stuttgart's rival success story tells you just how good we think this X4 is. Point it down a fast winding road and your smooth flowing progress will be imperious, aided by X-Drive all-wheel drive traction that inspires enormous confidence. This setup is standard across the range and really comes into its own in the winter months, distributing as it can almost 100% of power to either axle or a mix between both front and rear. In normal conditions, power distribution is split 40% to the front and 60% to the rear. Either way, the car will be kept firmly planted through the tightest bends in the foulest weather. An X-Drive status display on the dash uses three-dimensional graphics to keep the driver informed of the car's body roll and pitch. It helps that feedback from the tactile, pleasantly chunky three-spoke sports steering wheel is far better than you fear an electric steering system might offer. Though for me, it still lacks that last nth of tarmac feedback that, as an enthusiast, I'd really be seeking. That's despite the standard provision across the lineup of BMW's variable sports steering setup, which is supposed to offer more response the more lock that you apply. I think the advantages this feature adds to be slight, but at least they do complement the way this car is so good at delivering more the more you ask from it. Just how much depends upon a number of factors, first of which is your selection of modes from the drive performance control system that most models offer. The rocker switch for which you'll find down here by the gear stick. 
you might be used to this kind of a thing by now, a setup that allows you to tweak the steering, throttle and stability control system thresholds depending on the operating mode you select. Gear change times two if, like most X4 models, your car has a ZF8 speed auto transmission that comes with smart steering wheel paddles. Now ignore drive performance control or select its most relaxed comfort or efficient eco pro settings and the traveling experience in this car though very comfortable isn't especially memorable push the rocker switch forward into sport though and the reaction you get immediately feels keener and more alert more like the kind of x4 enthusiasts would expect this car to be to really create that kind of machine though, you've to spend a bit of extra money, primarily on the EDC electronic damper control setup that's on the model I'm driving here. A system able to alter the ride to suit the road you're on and the mood that you're in. It'll firm up nicely in sport mode with even more red mist possible by selecting the additional sport plus setting that also relaxes the DSC stability control electronic safety net a little for more spirited driving, if you should be that way inclined. Under the bonnet, the mainstream X4 lineup is an all diesel one that opens with an X Drive 20D variant packing a 190 brake horsepower 2 litre turbo diesel. Even this base model will get to 62 miles per hour in 8 seconds and on to 132 miles per hour, and it comes as standard with a 6 speed manual gearbox, though it can be specified with that 8 speed automatic transmission that I just mentioned. Of course, for some, a BMW is only worthy of the name if it features a proper straight six plumbed in up front. If that's the case, you'll start your search with the X Drive 30D variant that I'm trying here. This is fitted with the auto box as standard and delivers a pokey 258 brake horsepower. That's an exact match for the directly comparable Porsche Macan S diesel. The resulting performance delivered is actually slightly better than the Macan can manage. At 62 miles per hour from rest flashing by in 5.8 seconds en route to 145 miles per hour. In the unlikely event that this should prove a little too tardy for you, there's always the X-Drive 35D which delivers 313 brake horsepower and uses launch control to batter its way to 62 miles per hour in 5.2 seconds before keeping on accelerating all the way to 153 miles per hour. All these engines are exactly the same ones you'd find in the BMW X3 SUV this car is based upon, which for me references the only slight disappointment we have with the handling responses of this car. While an X6 feels a significantly sportier thing than its X5 donor model, the advantages that an X4 holds over a comparably specified X3 are much slighter and less significant. It's fortunate then that both cars are so dynamically able. If you don't find the Coupe SUV statement this X4 makes as extreme as that of its larger X6 stablemate, then I'd agree with you. It's been described as the X6's attack dog little brother and that probably sums it up. While the X6 holds two fingers up at the establishment, this car's approach is mellower and easier on the eye. If you wanted to make more of a statement, then you're going to need to resort to the options lists. That said, you'd have to say that there's a cohesion to this car's shape and a purpose to its stance that escapes its bulky, bigger sibling. The Munich brand thinks it has the sporting elegance of a classical coupe, though it's debatable whether any kind of SUV can ever manage that. Still, it's certainly a design that'll prove popular with those desiring a BMW of this sort, but wanting something a bit less staid and suburban than an X3. This is certainly a more muscular and agile looking thing, especially at the front where large air intakes and strong character lines in the front apron visually lower the centre of gravity and aim to signal the sharper dynamics. It's an effect that BMW has tried to further enhance with the fog lamps sighted below the signature twin headlights. 
In profile, the coupe-like roofline reaches its highest point over the front seats before dropping gently towards the trailing edge of the boot lid. For all that though, this car has more the look of an SUV hatch than any kind of coupe. One reason being that it lacks the frameless windows that give you that sort of feel in the larger X6. In compensation, the stylists have reinterpreted the traditional BMW swage line that sweeps down the flanks, splitting it in two just below the back door handles to accentuate the powerful sculpting of the rear wings. Contoured C-pillars, strong shoulders and a broad and low set rear end all complete a fashionable effect that ideally needs to be set off by the M aerodynamic body styling touches fitted to the car that I have here. In other words, the aesthetics are very different from those of the boxier BMW X3 SUV this car is based upon, underlined by the fact that it's 14 millimeters longer and sits 36 millimeters lower to the ground. Slinkier looks, though, often lead to practical compromises, and you can't help looking at this sweeping rear tail section and wondering about the compromises that might involve for the headroom of rear seat occupants. In the event, there aren't really any to make, though only because BMW has positioned the back seats 28 millimeters closer to the ground than it would be in an X3. It also helps that the ceiling has been gouged out to good effect and there are reasonable standards of leg and knee room for this class of car. Now against the odds then, adults will be comfortable back here provided that there are only two of them though you can in theory fit three people across this bench. In practice, you'll only be doing that if you're carrying kids. Still, at least you can do it, not something you can take for granted in a BMW Coupe SUV. After all, in the larger X6, you only get two rear seat positions as standard, thanks to the way that the bench is molded for extra cornering support. Here, the designers have tried to keep some of that support in a way that the two outer occupants will probably appreciate, but that's also led to the need for an uncomfortably raised molding on which any unfortunate middle occupant will have to perch. Now, they'll also have to deal with this prominent center transmission tunnel. Up front, the seats are also positioned in a lower sportier demeanor than they would be in an X3, this time 20 millimeters closer to the deck. So no, this isn't the car to buy if you like the traditional high up SUV command seating position. Still, it's a very spacious environment and the seat and steering wheel have more than enough adjustment to ensure placement of the ideal driving position. Not so ideal is over the shoulder visibility, hampered by the thick pillars and the narrow screen at the rear. It's a price you'll pay for looking good, but one slightly mitigated by the fact that BMW fits all round parking sensors as standard. Glance around and if you're at all familiar with BMW's more conventional X3 model, you won't find much difference here, which may be a slight disappointment after the avant-garde exterior looks. Now that means a set of virtually faultless ergonomics, but also a cabin that, despite electric plated accents and a high gloss black finish, can feel a little dull and plain unless you lift it with some of the more colourful trim treatments. At minimum, I'd want to specify an upmarket finish like the anthracite wood interior trim and the headlining that I have here but it all works so well. The main dial's in particular a model of clarity. I particularly like the easy access to the climate and stereo controls that doesn't require you having to root around in submenus on an infotainment touchscreen. You don't get one of those here, and you don't need it because BMW's iDrive system is now so effective, even if its screen isn't quite as well integrated into the dash layout as, say, an Audi MMI setup. There's a lot on here, from maintenance schedules and visual handbook representations to the many varied and mainly optional functions that make up the Munich Maker's connected drive system. And it's all very easy to find, particularly with the revised rotary controller that's part of the optional BMW professional setup that I'm using here. 
and out back, well, once the standard automatic tailgate raises slowly open, you'll find that the swept back styling has slightly reduced the carriage capacity of this car over what you'd get in an X3. Though not by very much, the figure reduces from 550 litres to 500 litres in this X4. Unfortunately, there's quite a high loading lip, but if you pay extra for the extended storage option I have here, you get a floor net to keep loose things in place along with a side stowage net area, a strap to secure smaller items, a multifunction luggage hooks, a 12 volt power socket and plug-in segment for a luggage compartment floor liner that you could use to divide up the boot area. Overall, the space provided matches that of a rival Porsche Macan, but is actually 80 litres more than you'd get in a comparable Range Rover Evoque. Now, if you need extra room, the rear seat back has 40, 20, 40 splits, so that if you are carrying two rear passengers, you could poke through a long item, say a set of skis, without disturbing them. And then, if you need further room, then completely flattening the backrest frees up a very reasonable 1,000 400 litres of space. Expect to pay somewhere in the 37,000 to 50,000 pound bracket for your X4. In the mainstream lineup, there's a choice of three diesel engines, with around 65% of buyers likely to opt for the entry level four cylinder X Drive 20D variant. To progress from here to get six cylinder power in the form of either this X Drive 30D or the top X Drive 35D version, you're looking at having to find quite a premium. These variants sitting in the 45 to 50,000 pound bracket. Now that's partly because the six cylinder models only come with an automatic gearbox and a plusher specification. As a design, the X4 is based on BMW's squarer, more practical X3 model. But as you'd expect, there's a premium to pay for this more fashionable interpretation of SUV-ness. Base your comparisons against an X3 with exactly the same engines, and you're looking at a premium of around £3,500 if you're considering the 20D or 35D variants. Though, for some reason, that rises to nearly £5,000 if you're looking at this particular model's 30D engine. So how does it stack up as a value proposition? Unlike the motoring magazines, I'm not going to waste your time by pointing out that a squarer, more conventional premium badge compact SUV would be cheaper and more practical. If you can afford a car of this sort, I'd assume that you already know that. You're looking at an X4 because you like this class of car, but want an interpretation of it that's sportier and more stylish, and you don't mind paying a little for the privilege. In the larger luxury SUV segment above, BMW's success with their X5 derived X6 model has proved that there are plenty of these kinds of people. But of course, other brands have also noticed the customer interest in cars of this kind. So against an entry-level X4 xDrive 20D, a similar kind of alternative would be the kind of Range Rover Evoque SD4 190. That would save you about £5,000. Though that difference would narrow considerably if you were to spec the Evoque to X4 levels. Moving into the mid part of the X4 range and this X-Drive 30D model, the obvious direct rival is Porsche's Macan S Diesel, which theoretically costs around £1,500 less, but in reality probably costs a little more with comparable equipment levels. Now, as for the desirable X4 X-Drive 35D, well, there are no real Porsche or Range Rover matches for it, but I would direct you towards the surprisingly impressive Audi SQ5 TDI a car with the same 313 brake horsepower output and a saving of just over £4,000 to offer. It's not really a coupe-style compact SUV though, which if you're considering this car is probably what you set out to buy. If having considered all of this, you conclude that it is an X4 that you really want, you're going to need to know just how generous BMW has been with the standard spec. 
And the answer is that a reasonable amount is included even with entry-level SE trim. So all variants get smart alloy wheels of at least 18 inches in size, LED front fog lights, xenon headlamps with washers, an automatic tailgate and park distance control parking sensors front and rear. Inside there's Nevada leather upholstery, heated front seats, automatic two-zone air conditioning, cruise control and a sport leather steering wheel from which you control BMW's variable sport steering system. There are also a whole series of functions operable via the excellent iDrive infotainment setup, including a BMW business branded media package and navigation system, Bluetooth connectivity, a USB audio interface and a DAB tuner. Most buyers though are going to want to upgrade to one of the plusher trim levels, possibly choosing to find the extra £1,500 premium for X-Line spec because it includes things like sport seats and the drive performance control setup which according to your choice of modes allows you to tweak steering, efficiency and throttle response to suit the way you want to drive. It's more likely though that like over half of all X4 buyers, you're going to want to find the £3,000 premium necessary to get your car in the top M Sport trim that I have here. If possible, you really need to stretch to this as it finishes off the look of the car perfectly with fitments like M aerodynamic body styling and high gloss shadow line exterior trim. Also included is sport suspension, plus larger 19-inch M double-spoke wheels and a lovely M leather steering wheel with paddle shifters on automatic versions. As for options, while well, I'd certainly be tempted by some of the features fitted to this particular X4, electronic damper control is a key one, which works through the settings of the drive performance control setup and completes that system by enabling you to match the ride of the car to suit the mood you're in and the road that you're on. Now, other nice to have features include a comfort access stop start button, a reversing assist camera and to further help with parking, power folding mirrors and a surround view camera system. It's also worth considering the large electric glass sunroof and a head up display that projects key information onto the bottom of the windscreen. A good way to option up your car is to use some of the bundled packages BMW offers. Now this car for example has the M Sport Plus package which gives you larger 20 inch M double spoke alloy wheels, an upgraded Harman Kardon surround sound stereo system and adaptive headlights that guide you around the bends and also have a high beam assistant that dips them in the face of oncoming traffic at night. Now you'll probably also want the interior comfort package that includes sun protective glass, electric seats and what BMW calls extended storage with things like a stowage net to help you make better use of the boot space. Don't go spending too much on items like these though until you've considered the merits of BMW's various connected drive media packages. Now these include the latest BMW professional navigation system with its smarter iDrive touch controller which can offer a pad for writing text or using a cursor on an interactive map. Now the navigation setup can also divert you around jams with real-time traffic information and BMW online services. If you're fully equipped in this way, you'll be able to access smartphone applications such as OPO or Deezer and get BMW's online entertainment package that provides direct access to music services such as Rara or Napster with their millions of music tracks as well as audiobooks. There's also the latest infotainment features like full speech recognition and voice control with an optional message dictation function. Plus there's web radio, access to social networking and the Google Send to Car system so you can plan your route beforehand on your PC then remotely forward it to your car. Then there are services such as Google Local Search plus telephone directories, restaurants and hotel guides. You'll have access to various BMW apps too, including my favourite one, a free remote app that enables you to remotely lock or unlock your car if you lose your keys.
Safety-wise, there are the usual twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus all kinds of electronic acronyms to hopefully ensure that you never have to use them. Switchable DSC, dynamic stability control, of course, plus there's also ASC, automatic stability control, and DTC, dynamic traction control systems to look after you. ABS braking is aided by DBC, dynamic brake control, and CBC, cornering brake control, plus there's there's a brake drying function to ensure that even in the wet the discs are optimally effective. There's a tyre puncture warning system and isofix child seat fastenings too. But of course you can go a lot further than that. The driving assistant function uses a camera mounted in the rear view mirror to detect a possible collision alerting the driver and automatically initiating braking if necessary. The same camera is used by an active cruise control system that not only constantly keeps you a safe distance behind the car in front, but also, if you come across a tailback, can even slow you to a stop and start you off again. Further optional camera operated safety features include lane change and lane departure warning systems that will warn you of a potential collision when changing lanes and a speed limit display that pictures road signs as you pass them and displays them on either the dash or on the optional head-up display. If the worst should happen, there's a standard emergency call system that in an accident will automatically summon help, alerting the emergency services to your exact GPS location. Could be a lifesaver. For all the talk surrounding this X4 model's fashionable looks and dynamic drive, perhaps the most impressive thing about it is its cost effectiveness. Much of this is down to BMW's clever, efficient dynamics technology. The elements of this are copied by just about every other brand in this segment, but the way the Munich maker has put them all together really seems to have hit the efficiency sweet spot. We're talking here of things like lightweight engineering, electric power steering, low rolling resistance tires, brake energy regeneration, and an auto stop start system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, say stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. But the driver must also play his or her part. So there's an optimum gear shift indicator on the dash and an Eco Pro mode you can select in the drive performance control system that'll focus all the car systems on ultimate frugality. Whichever X4 variant you're looking at, the results of all of this effort are gratifying. Despite this car's sleeker silhouette, the returns are no better than those of the X3 model it's based upon. But since these are already very good, that's no problem. Let's say you're looking at the entry-level X-Drive 20D four-cylinder diesel variant. This manages 54.3 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 138 grams per kilometer of CO2, which makes it a car that's about 10% cleaner and more economical than a rival Range Rover Evoque SD4190. Now, to reduce this X4 model CO2 return still further, you can opt for a set of 17-inch aero wheels with reduced rolling resistance tyres that are supposed to take a further 7 grams per kilometre of CO2 off of that total figure. And it's a similar story as you move further up the range into the automatic-only six-cylinder diesel variants. So the returns of the X-Drive 30D variant I'm trying here, well, 47.9 miles per gallon and 156 grams per kilometre of CO2. Give it a small but significant advantage over its nearest rival, Porsche's Macan S Diesel. Now the optional aero wheels I just mentioned would underline that still further. And if you're tempted to upgrade from this X-Drive 30 diesel model to the Pokier 35D derivative, you'd be pleased to find that there are virtually no running cost penalties for doing so. The X-Drive 35D variant manages 47.1 miles per gallon and 157 grams per kilometre. That's about 15% better than a rival Audi SQ5 TDI. 
what else? Well, there's a condition-based service indicator and those maintenance costs can be kept in check with two optional servicing packages which cover you for servicing or servicing and maintenance for five years or 50,000 miles. As for insurance groupings, well, you're talking Group 31 for the X-Drive 20D, Group 40 for the X-Drive 30D and Group 43 for the X-Drive 35D. That only leaves residual values, which will probably be a little stronger than the norm for a premium badged compact SUV of this kind, thanks to this model's greater desirability. In many ways, you wonder why it took BMW so long to come up with this car. The larger X6 long ago proved that the concept could work, and in the boxy X3, the Munich maker had the perfect foundation from which to create something smarter and sportier. Inevitably, a model of this kind will continually divide opinion. The people who don't like it will tell you to buy a cheaper, more practical X3. But then they're probably the same people who can't see the point of anything prioritising style over substance. In any case, this X4 does have substance to its proposition, at least when it comes to efficiency, quality and low running costs. It's even reasonably spacious and practical. Don't be dissuaded then if you'd like one. This may not be quite the sharpest dynamic contender in its segment, but it's still an astonishingly rewarding steer for something based on SUV underpinnings. Yes, there's an element of compromise in its packaging, but the world would be a dull place if we only bought cars on a pragmatic basis. File this one under unexpectedly likable.